Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of Experts Interviews on Role Model Maker. I'm your host, Dr. L, the Parent Whisperer, and today with me, I have a very special guest. My guest is Robin Keen. I've had the opportunity to be on some stages with her before. She's an amazing lady. Uh, I love how she shows up in the world, and I like her message, and uh, she, what she wants to do in this world is very close to my heart. So I brought her on stage with us today on the channel. Uh, Robin, welcome to the show and thank you for being with us today, taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, I am excited that you're here. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and your personal story and how you kind of came to do what you do, which I so love. Oh, thanks, Dr. L. Thank you so much for having me. So uh, I have four kids and um, got some sunshine coming in here. So <laughs> it's getting sunnier, which is great. I'm in Seattle, so yay. Um, so I've got four kids and when they were growing up, my experience growing up was that my parents were very type A personalities. My dad was an airline pilot. My mom was a teacher. And I grew up just knowing that whatever I said I wanted to do, I needed to finish it. Like that was just, there were no options to quit. But then I had four kids and my first one hit preschool age and she loved it and then suddenly she didn't love it. She didn't want to go. And I thought, what is this? She wants to quit. And she's like three and a half or four. And so I had a conversation finally with her teacher because I also had a little one, a younger one. And I was like, this is exhausting to get her ready to go and then have all of this upset and fighting and crying about not wanting to go. What is this? Mm -hmm. And she asked me two questions. Number one, is she safe here? And number two, do you value this for her? And if the answers to those questions are yes, then you decide you're the grown up. She's smart, she's capable, but she's like four. And I went, oh, oh, okay. I, I have to adult here, I have to be par a parent. Well, at the same time, I had a music studio that grew into a music and dance studio. And so over 20 some years, I watched this play out over and over and over again, where a child would suddenly want to quit. And depending on the parents, upbringing and their personalities. So I think there are a few things that play there. Um, some kids would stay because parents would be like, we're not quitting. And other parents would be like, well, we're going to go now. Something's wrong. And so we are going to go do this or we're going to go try that. And so they would be gone. But what I noticed, Dr. L, was that the kids who stayed, whose parents understood that, that it was just a phase, it was just a a valley, it wasn't permanent, that they didn't like it or didn't want to come for any reason or no reason. Those kids ended up being like the kids that did everything well. They were not just good at piano, but they also were good at soccer and they were good at school and they were they were winning like literally the national history fair and the science fair, right? And I was thinking, I just have really remarkable students. They're just like super smart and super gifted, <laughs> which they were. But then I realized, oh, and the kids who drop out, those kids, if you follow them, and, and because I lived in a small town, I could track, those kids actually became the ones that were more isolated, more sullen, more resistant. Those were the kids who started telling the story, I'm actually not good at anything. Mm -hmm. And as they became junior high schoolers and teenagers, they didn't even want to try anymore. So that's kind of where all of this work I do around helping people raise quit proof kids came from was, wow, I want the kids to be capable, confident. And there's a, there's a way to do that, right? But we don't know that as parents. We, we just do what we knew and we do what's aligned with our personality as well. Okay, I'm gonna no. shift. <laughs> Robin, you just mentioned a whole bunch of things. It raised a whole bunch of questions for me. So I'll be going over those in just a second. But sure. um, so so in this idea, I mean, you actually mentioned that why it's so, so important uh, to make sure that we have quit proof kids. Uh, but I have a couple of questions on this now. What's the difference between a kid that just quits uh, versus a kid that knows that that's not something that they're about or they don't want to pursue it. So that's one question. And the yeah. second question, which is just amazing to me, is like when, when you mentioned that by the time they get to junior high and high school, they don't want to try anything. It is amazing to me how early that is that some people just give up on trying new things in life and how important it is for people to maintain that love of learning and uh, personal improvement 
throughout ages, you know, not just the first and the second decade, but, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth decade of your life, right? So, yeah. Uh, so the first question, of course, I had was about that, that what's the difference between the two? How can you tell them apart? And then the second part of it is uh, that with the kids that uh, are staying with the program, mm -hmm. how do they know when is enough enough? Like if they're pushing themselves, uh, but it's not necessarily where they need to be pushing themselves or do we make that call? or how do parents make that call of where to push the kids and where not to? Okay, well, those are great questions. So the first question though is about, you know, is your child actually doing the right activity? So here's what I believe, and I can give you an example. Um, I believe when kids are really little, you as a parent have an opportunity to make a decision about what they're doing. And so I witnessed a lot of parents not really actually making a decision they just said, oh, all the kids are doing, like my daughter's friends are all doing ballet at your studio. I'm gonna to come to your studio and do ballet. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking little kids. I'm talking like under seven, right, right. under seven. Let's just do ballet. But there is actually not a further thought process about that. Meaning they don't know why and they don't know for how long and they don't know for what outcome. Mm -hmm. And so what I suggest is that if you think ballet is a great thing, actually stop for a minute and go, okay, for what reason? What is my goal here? Is it just for my child to have an experience? Is it for my child to learn some skills or is it for my child to actually master something? Those are three very different reasons to have your child in an activity. Mm -hmm. So that's the first question. What are you doing there and why? Why that thing? Why now? For what purpose? And then the second question is based on what the outcome is I want for how long? So if I just want my child to have an experience of soccer, we will play for the season because, or the six weeks, if they're little tiny kids or whatever it is, we will commit to that. And we're gonna stick it out through that duration. And then we're gonna reevaluate. On the other hand, if it's for, uh, let's say we're in gymnastics and it's for, I want my child who is a toddler or let's say four to be able to do a forward roll I'm going to ask the coach, how long will that take? And they're going to tell me it's going to take anywhere from, I'm just making it up three to eight weeks mm -hmm. and our sessions are eight weeks. So let's just plan on that. Okay. That's a logical time to quit. Right. But if I say like my parents, I want my daughter to play the piano. Well, I've been teaching piano for over 25 years. The method I teach you can play really quickly, like within a couple of weeks you're playing songs, but what I had and what my parents had in mind for me, I took traditional lessons, it, it took years, right? So they were committed. So I stuck with it. However, the story I wanna tell you is that um, actually what happened was I played by ear from a very, very young age. <laughs> and so my parents went, oh, let's get a piano. So we had a piano in the house from the time I was three and I, but they t found out that I should really take Suzuki violin. So I took Suzuki violin from the time I was like four and a half until I was 10. Mm -hmm. And then at 10, my parents said to me, you have a choice, more Suzuki violin or piano. And I was like, piano. Mm -hmm. So there was a, they knew my heart. They knew I really wanted to play the piano, but they also saw me gaining skills from violin, mm -hmm. but then they gave me a choice. So your second question or part of your question was like, when do you let, when do you know this isn't your kid's thing and let them do something else? Well, so I think there are two parts to that. Well, I think there's one big part, which is being present with your child and knowing and witnessing what is it about this that's working for them? And do they have another thing that they really know that they wanna do? And when kids are little, they just wanna try everything, right? Mm -hmm. They haven't. Right had anything go wrong or then not been good at something. So kids are very willing to try lots of stuff. Right. It's right? the newness factor, right? Try something new just to see. But to get pulled into the newness factor before a child has actually gained a, an outcome, like reached a goal, finished something. If you are constantly looking for the newness factor, that's when it, you get into the danger zone because mm. 
a child who is who, everyone naturally think about any long-term relationship you've had at some point you know you went into it with yay high hopes and it's wonderful and then at some point <clears throat> it was just okay and at some point you didn't like it that's natural that's normal right so if we take that when your child says i don't want to go this week as something is wrong if you believe that something is wrong and you don't know that it's just part of the peaks valleys and plateaus and you pull them out before they've attained a goal now you put them in something else and the same thing happens again the newness wears off they just don't like it some week and you think something's wrong and you pull them out again before they've reached a goal we start to set up a pattern and that's where we get into the danger zone a kid's telling the story because they're children they don't know better i'm just not really good at anything so it's important that we're present we're paying attention my parents knew i was doing well in violin but my heart was with the piano i played it every chance i got they were aware enough that they could say okay you've reached the goal in violin now what so good point does that make sense yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm actually very glad. And I know that playing by ear, because I do, versus reading notes are completely different things when it comes to music and requires different parts of the brain. So, so absolutely. Um, so what are the challenges that you typically see out there uh, people facing, both on the kid side and then also on the parent side of things in trying to raise kids like this? Yeah, so I think the challenge is quite honestly that there are a few. One is, you know, I didn't know, just like you don't know, like any parent, we just don't know. We are not, we don't go into parenting and just know, oh, well, most of us don't anyway. Um, these are the danger zones with activities, right? Like if I let my child quit, I don't think anything is going to happen. We just don't know that repeated quitting, it, something will happen <clears throat> and it lasts for life, right? Mm -hmm. It's a, a story that we tell ourselves through junior high and high school and college and beyond those years and, and into adulting. If we believe we can't finish what we start, if we believe we really aren't very skilled at anything, that follows us forever. But we don't know that. I didn't know that as a new mom. And thank God for Madeline's teacher, Mrs. O'Brien, who said, you get to choose, like you decide what, what you want her to do and for what reason. Thank God for her because that changed everything for me. Mm. Um, and then I was able to share that with parents that were in my studio, like this is what's gonna happen and you get to choose. But I think we don't know. And I also think um, we also don't know ourselves all that well as young parents about how our background, our history, and our personality um, set things up with our kids, right? So there are some parents who are more ruler archetypes, right? And they're going to do it no matter what I say. And, and then there's a lack of relationship. And we don't know that. We don't know that we're setting up a child who's now afraid of, you know, having to be a perfect, they become perfectionistic in their activities, right? There's so many things we just aren't aware of. So around quitting though, if parents understood what was getting set up, they might be less likely to let their child quit um, prematurely and prematurely is without having achieved the outcome that they wanted. Um, so that's really important. I think that parents don't know that. Um, I think so ask me another question about quitting. So <laughs> I'm like, I could just sit here and talk about it. But so, yeah, so we're talking about what parents don't know. You also asked me, I think, what parents don't know about themselves. So I want to say one more thing on the flip side of this, which is parents can also get into situations with their kids where kids really do need to quit something mm -hmm. and parents don't, don't let them, yeah. right? So that was kind of that's what's perking in my head right now. It's like you asked me something else, and it's the flip side of this, right. where we do get sometimes kids that are really perfectionistic, and they really begin to push themselves, and they really um, are hard on themselves, and they really do need to stop something. It might not be to stop the activity, but parents need to keep an eye out for kids that become perfectionists, mm -hmm. because it's not helping anybody when a child. Um, 
is really hard on themselves. And so I look at where does that come from? I used to think it came from parents and I think sometimes it does. I think there are some parenting styles where, uh, you know, you never give up, right? You just never quit, you never give up. But what that sets up is uh, shame and guilt around knowing something needs to change and not knowing how to stop and feeling guilty if you do and feeling afraid of a parent's um, reaction to wanting to quit, right? So there's a balance here that has to happen. Right. And I typically see that not with, well, I do see perfectionist at little, little children. And I can tell you where classes they're in, they're in ballet. <laughs> <laughs> girls, usually good little girls can be so hard on themselves and it's a personality type. So I know it's not just parents. It's a, it's a personality of perfectionism that can be exaggerated by parents. Um, so, and then I also see it with older kids who think they're good at everything and believe that about themselves and they really are not, not wanting to stop. Mm -hmm. And sometimes parents need to be the ones that say, look, you are, you are 14 years old and you play soccer. I had a child like this and he was amazing. Eli, he played soccer very well. He did school very well. He was amazing at piano. Everything he did, he did well. But I remember when he was about 14 coming into class one day and he had these big circles under his eyes and he was sitting in class. He was in a group of other kids and he was sitting there and his head tipped back. You know, it was just kind of like, uh, I could see it. And he, at the end of that class, his dad came up to me and he said, Eli is going to quit piano because he's bored. <laughs> mm. And I said, uh, if I may, he's not bored. He's exhausted. Like, he is literally exhausted. And you're going to need to, you know, I mean, we had a good relationship, so I could say this to his dad, but you're going to need to make some decisions for him because he can't make them for himself. Mm. You might need to sit down with Eli and just say, you're pushing, we're pushing, you know, we're all pushing mm. and we're exhausted and you're exhausted and your brother's exhausted by our schedule. So what do we need to do to help you pull back from some things and prioritize the most important things? Mm -hmm. Right, so they're both sides of it. They're just right. two sides. Awesome. I mean, I love it. And there's all these scenarios that come up from parents who want to live vicariously through their children, and you yeah. know, force these things to them to all these other things. But um, without going into all the specific scenarios and everything, what are some of your tips and challenges to actually raise kids that know what they want and also can stick with it, see that so that they can get the results yeah. they want. So I think when children are really little, it's up to parents to make the decision about what they're going to do. Sure, they can ask their three-year-old if they want to play soccer, but a three-year-old doesn't even know what that is, right? Like they don't know what that's going to take. Right. So looking around, seeing the different activities your child wants to, or you want your child to do, think about why. What is it that's about this? So if it's gymnastics, great. Gymnastics can build depending on where you go, right? You need to know where you're taking your child, like, and really find out what their grounding is. What do they stand for? What's, so that's probably first step is like, okay, what do you want? And then what's going to be the place that aligns the most with your goals for your child? So it, uh, I work with the studio, a gymnastics company in the Midwest, and they are the confidence building gym. So if you say, I want my child to do gymnastics, go find a place because I want them to gain confidence. Go find a place that focuses on confidence. Their mission is building confidence. Great. So now I know that I'm going to do this thing and I'm going to go to this place and now think about for what reason, for how long. Mm -hmm. Start there. You decide initially for your child and don't, don't do something crazy. Like we're going to be here for a whole year. Let's say, let's be here for six weeks or let's be here for a session. Check it out. See how your child does. Because there are some kids like my grandson, who's six, when he was three, he wanted nothing to do with soccer. He was scared of being on a field, running around with other kids. So it was one session and his parents were like, that's probably not the best thing for him. Like he probably would be better off in a music class where there's not a big field and there's not a lot of running around, but he can sit on my lap and he can play the drums, right? So know your child and don't lock them into something, try something, but let them know, hey, we're gonna do this till it's done. And then when they're done say, wow, 
you did such a great job sticking with it till you were done. You can use those words. It starts to let them know, oh, we finished. We did something. It is done, right? Like mission accomplished. That's wonderful to start layering those words into language that you use with your child. So that would be one thing. As your child grows, you can be having bigger conversations like, hey, you've expressed a lot of interest in doing t-ball this year. And you've, con you've continued to say that you want it. We watched some games. You watched your brother or friends play and you really want to do it. So let's do it. And just so you know what that means is you're on a team. So when you're on a team, you have to stay until it's over. Like you can't leave the team. And there are going to be times when you love it and times when you really don't want to go and it's raining and yucky and yeah. And there are going to be times where you just don't really care one way or another. And maybe you'd rather do something else. But no matter what, we're going to go. And we're going to stick with the team and we're going to get it done and it's going to be amazing and you're going to have fun and you won't have fun, but that's okay. And then you do it and then you have, again, a celebration. It's done. You did it. You accomplished this thing. You hit a home run, whatever it was. You put in the effort, right? So noticing your child's effort, that's important. Their, their stick to itiveness, their quit proofness, that's great. Say something about it. So I think it's important to do all of those things, right? And acknowledge the accomplishment. And then as they get older, right? You also said something about, well, how do you know when it's time to quit? Well, I've had, you know, my own four kids where they've wanted to quit. And I'm sure that we don't quit in a valley. That's one of the most important things. I never let my kids quit when they weren't happy in an activity. They had to be happy because from a happy place, I can make an evaluation. Oh yeah, I do love it. I'm happy. And I know I want to go do this other thing now. That's a much better place to make a decision than I hate it. I don't want to go. I want to quit. Well, okay. Well, we all want to quit when we hate something. <laughs> we get back to a happy place and make a, a logical, reasonable decision about it now from a good space, not an unhappy space. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Uh, this is really, really good stuff. Well, um, and I want our audience to have a way of connecting with you and just seeping this in because this is so valuable. A lot of kids, you know, they get to points, especially later on in life. And then there's two parts. One is that what you're teaching right now is uh, having an end goal, having some kind of an exit strategy of before you get into something, understanding the purpose behind doing something. I mean, how often adults uh, get into a job or do something and they don't know why they're there and they're kind of lost in that and it doesn't serve their purpose or reflects their values, but they're there because somehow circumstances dictate it or we quit just before we are about to make a breakthrough. Uh, so these are really, really important concepts and points. And how can people find out more about you, Robin, and what you do and connect with you? Yeah, thank you for that. And you're right. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of moms because what you just said is exactly 100% true, right? We say yes to things. We commit to things from it, just like a knee jerk reaction sometimes, right? Somebody says, can you do this? And you're like, oh, sure, I'll do that. And then you get into it. You think, what did I say yes for? I don't care if it's the bake sale and you find out, yeah, I actually don't bake. So why did I just say yes to my child's bake sale, right? <laughs> or, or why did I say yes to, to doing this job when it's actually not at all aligned with my skill set or my personality or my dreams and desires? Um, so I love to help adults with this work too, because there are ways to accountably quit things that just free us up to live way more, you know, joyfully and on purpose. So yeah, people can find me a couple of places. So um, Quit Proof Kids, Q-U-I-T, quitproofkids.com is my website. Uh, shortly have a parenting archetype quiz that'll be available there. So you can get a better sense of like, how do you parent and why? How is this set up? And what does that do with your child who's probably got a different personality. Um, quitting culture is another place where people can find me. So that's where I work with entrepreneurs and business owners. And you can always find me on Facebook. I have a really fun group called Overdoers Anonymous where <laughs> people usually relate to that. They're like, oh, that sounds a little bit like me. I have a lot of people in there. Um, and then I have a Quit Proof Kids, Raising Quit Proof Kids Facebook page where you can connect with me as well. 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, I encourage you guys all to go ahead and check Robin's uh, Facebook and the information that she has for you. Robin, thank you again for coming here and spending time with us and telling us about these important things. I just love your personality and how you show up in the world and your mission. Uh, and I really appreciate you for being here for, with us. Any final words before we part? Just remember, never quit in a valley. And that goes for you too, because as parents watching your kids go through this, sometimes you're going to be like, ah, I give up. Don't give up. <laughs> Hang in there and, you know, don't quit yourself. Don't quit on your kids. Don't quit on their activities. You're the grown up. So be strong and, and teach it to your kids. They learn it from you. Absolutely. I love it. Role model maker. I mean, you couldn't have said it better than that. So thank you. Definitely. <laughs> right. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, guys. We'll be seeing you on future episodes. And if you haven't already done so, please click subscribe uh, so that the new episodes that come, you'll get notified. But have a good one. Thank you, Robin. Bye. Thank you, Bill.